on today's exciting new episode of the Points of Interest podcast. I say goodbye to a convention I've been going to for 10 years and other things. Join us. Well, hello, and welcome to the most generic podcast on the internet. My name is Josh Hawks. I am the 303 Ninja. And right over there, he is my podcasting partner for life. He is the other guy. It's Mr. Francis Fernandez. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted, I was going to say something about nerdcore hip hop, but I couldn't think of anything clever. Um, it was really hot for about three weeks in 2005. Well, like, wizard rock was also a thing when Harry Potter was super fresh. And people were doing wizard rock music for years. And then it obviously, like, every kind of geeky flash in the pan went away. But, like, there's not a lot of geek stuff in music that survives or lasts, it looks like. No, it really doesn't. I, 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 I play this stuff at work sometimes and I'll get a few, like, what? is this especially when a computer starts a computer voice starts rapping in the middle middle of a song um and that's what i'll explain to people like well it it was a genre of rap it was hot for about three weeks early 2000s oh well no a little longer exaggerated (laughs) exaggerated yeah yeah uh but it it was it was something that there was like a a bunch of people that did it there were a few talented people in the group you know, in the in the, the big pool of nerdcore rappers. Mm-hmm. And because it was so niche, it just didn't last. Yeah, that's just that's so crazy that you know, it it was kind of this thing that people were really, really into. And then why does that stuff not survive? And stuff like, you know, um, uh, what's it, EDM, or um, not that? Uh, what's the Skrillex do? He does. Um, I mean, it's it. it, it I, I, you it's a blank. type of EDM. Yeah, I mean, it it is probably a. There's somebody out there that's screaming into their fucking their iPod right now. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, they just. Dis- Hi, Ginger. Uh, they, they they discontinued the iPod. Did you I see know. That? I know. I did. Oh, I, but I'm just I'm just being a smart ass. But uh, they're screaming into their iPod saying, "No, it's this specific genre of EDM." Mm. You know, techno EDM. I think you can blink it. Yeah, it, it, had like it, a weird, it had a weird name for I forgot. It's been a while because it, does, it doesn't really exist. I don't think they make it anymore. Nerd, uh, that uh, genre nerd, of like, like nerdcore or what you're trying to talk, think of. The other one, yeah. yeah. Well, they don't make nerdcore either. No, but that again, that was again a flash in the pan, which is really weird. Uh, and unfortunate. I, you know, like I said. Uh, Dubstep. Oh, that's, that's, okay. That's the one I was talking I'm actually about. going to a dubstep show next month. Oh, the dubstep hasn't died. Okay, good. Not entirely. No, I think again, it's it's broken off into different subgenres. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the headliner of the show that I'm going to is in a subgenre called screamo. From what people, oh, I know are, screamo. From what people screamo. are telling me, and there there's a few other people on the on the, the, the card, if you will, that I'm interested in seeing. So I'm like, I'm not really into people screaming, but you know, if it's uh, got a nice beat to it and you can dance to it, then you know. Well, it's like, uh, you know, Screamo is like, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it? That type of metal that everyone gets so wound up about, like a uh, Slipknot or whatever. It's just what that's not really what is that like a I mean that's like a heavy metal heavy metal yeah or death metal or something where there's a lot of screaming right yeah uh, yeah so I've been educating myself on this this fellow that I've bought tickets to go see and I'm in I, I'm in for uh uh the the old man in the club vibes for sure but it'll be it'll be fun. Yeah, you're not listening, but you're not listening to whatever is like the new type of hip hop or the new type of because really that's what kids listen to now is the new whatever the new type of hip hop is. Sure. Nobody listens to like and maybe EDM. There's like a new version of EDM out there, too. But yeah, it's not like you're listening to that. It's not like you're going to a 
uh, Little Nas X concert or something. I mean, if somebody gave me tickets to it, I'd go. But no, okay, well there you go. Um, <laughs> it, it, I, <laughs> sorry, go on. Go I, on. The, the whole reason why I'm going, I looked at tickets. A, a friend of mine was talking about she wanted to go, and I was like, you know, I haven't been to a show in a long time of any kind, mm. uh, especially at Red Rocks. And most of the time, when I look at tickets, they're in upwards of triple digits, and oh, yeah. I I refuse to pay that much money to go do anything <laughs> really in, you know in life pretty much <laughs> <laughs> no but for for an, for an evening a, a, you know a hundred plus dollars for a couple hours that's that i like concerts but i don't like live music that fucking much but it's that anticipation of waiting for that beat to drop you know you're like is it gonna happen it's gonna happen <laughs> Right. Oh, the bass. The bass. Oh, the bass. The beat dropped. Thank you. Well. Oh, thank you, beat. Uh, to get to my point, though, they were the tickets were like forty bucks. I'm like, hell, oh, that's not bad. I'll I'll go. Hell, so I'd let my friend know. I'm like, well, you've got a date for the evening, so. Yeah, it's like going to Coachella. Coachella's what, like, a couple hundred bucks for a ticket, and you don't get like you just go to from tent to tent. Right. You don't really, you know, when you get to you get to listen to bands you've never heard of, like. Uh, you know, messed up trash chair or something like just words that are thrown together <laughs> right. to make band name. Sure, but see, like I, I guess it, it all just depends on what you're into, right? You and I would, you know, or or well, I may have to. I don't know what your status is. I I'm probably gonna have to pay pops possibly a couple hundred dollars to go to Dragon Con. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so like, I'm willing to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't think I'd be willing to spend the same amount of money to go see a dude or a bunch of dudes or dudettes perform for a evening. Yeah, well... You know what I'm yeah. saying? Where where yeah. Dragon Con's five days long for, let's just say for argument's sake, like $150 ticket. Yeah. Well, Coachella's like two weekends full of music. All, and they it lasts all day long, and then you can stay and participate in orgies, and then you know do it all over again the next day. So, then, Wait, uh, so it's just, just like Dragon Con then. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. I hate to say yes and no, <laughs> because I'm. Pr- I would say there is. I see. This is. This, I wish I I knew more, because. You know, Dragon Con is supposed to like be this party con, and it's going to be like you know it, it lasts all night, it's twenty four hours. It just it's a thing that just lasts all day and all night. But how, and no offense to the nerds out there, but how many <laughs> how many nerds are genuinely getting laid at Dragon Con? You know, we we have to put it out to the 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 audience that'll show up later, or the audience of post, or the the audio audience. You know, they'll have to let us know because until September, uh-huh. we're not gonna know, and well, we, yeah, we may not yeah. ever find out. But what I think I I want to do is walk up and down the hallways and try and find a party, and then you kick well, the door in and you see what kind of party it is, and. You know, if there's a bowl of mashed potatoes, you know what to do. Oh, it's going to be like a, you know, it's going to be like, well, I, I don't think you ever stayed in dorms, um, but dorm parties, they just leave their door open and people come in and out of their different dorm rooms because it's all at hotels. So you're just going to go in and out of hotel rooms, getting your booze on, you know, swimming in the pool naked, whatever. And you're just going to be doing that all night long. But like I said, you know, it's a nerd convention. Now, here's the thing. And please, ladies out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but attractive women have infiltrated nerd culture. Hmm. It, it allows them to cosplay. It allows them to talk about the stuff that they're interested in because oh, they, you know, before nice, there was nice choice of words, Francis. <laughs> allows. With what allows? Well, in the sense of like they they felt that they couldn't express themselves in okay, that way okay. in the past just make it i but, just want to make sure you're I, I was on the same page with you just you know yeah they just they couldn't express themselves in the past now they're able to right now they feel comfortable to 
while in the past they felt ridiculed or maybe mm-hmm. they felt like they wouldn't belong. Okay. Now they feel like I can belong into this world because it's acceptable. And then you have the other half of the, you know, the other half of the, the people who go there, the dudes who are just like, I mean, I'd say a good number. I mean, I'd say a good number of nerds. I mean, they get they they, they get around. You know, it, it, it's not the, it's not the the age of the the. Uh, well, okay, you tell me. You were at a convention recently. Okay. You tell me. Are do nerds still embody that stereotypical introverted, unable to socialize properly, kind of oeuvre, or have they now become the cool guys? Not like us. Well, like me. You're the cool guy. I'm, you know, but like. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. You you know, you're rocking. You're rocking the. What did you call your beard again? You're rocking the. I didn't call it anything. No, you said said it was a certain cut. Like, oh, you did the. the, the Don Johnson. (laughs) Don Johnson, yeah. So you you got the Don Johnson beard, right? You know, you're walking around, uh, shredding your stuff, wearing your geek gear. But also, you know, you're personable and you can talk to people and you don't have that um, that insecurity or that shyness that often it gets associated with nerds. You know, you're able to speak to people. You're able to 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 take those risks, because, again, in your head, what's the worst that can happen? They'll say no type of mentality. And you go out there and, and just kind of show that, you know, you can start your stuff. So you don't necessarily embody that. You know, you don't embody that typical nerd that goes to a convention. But maybe conventions were changed. You were at one recently, the last of its kind, so to speak. Yeah. um, I mean, since you're going to bring it up. Uh, Yeah. uh, So a convention called Starfest Denver that has been running since 77. Cool. 40, 40, 45 years. Mm. I, I turned 45 this year. Yeah. 45 years. Um, the, I think the first, the first show was like Leonard Nimoy and maybe, maybe the chat or, or some other, Ooh. but it was like this little tiny small show and it just continued to, to gain traction. Uh, it was split at one point. They had a star con and star fest. Mm. Uh, like a spring and summer show, and then well, eventually, used to, go ahead. It used to be a, a solely Star Trek convention, right? It started as a Star Trek thing, and then mm-hmm. you know, very quickly, you know, they started to see that pop culture was really a thing. Um, I it, just because it, not saying it was just a Star Trek thing. Like there was other. They said it was a Star Trek convention, and people showed up with Star Wars stuff or Battlestar gear or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a slideshow uh, and showed most of the badges or programs over the years. Mm-hmm. And every year they they parodied something. There was a mm-hmm. Sports Illustrated program, if you will, mm-hmm. where it was the Sports Illustrated font and you know layout, but it was you know Starfest. Uh, there was you know, just. Plays plays on on playbills or mm. whatever pop culture reference they were they were making at the time. So they were very much in the know the entire forty five year run. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. I started doing this whole podcasting thing in two thousand nine. I went to the my first. Apparently, I went to the last Star Con. People keep telling me I went there. I have friends that that were all apparently there, and I was there with them. I don't fucking remember ever going to a Star Con, ever. Maybe it was, maybe you just thought, oh, I'm at Starfest, even though it was Star Con. Maybe, you know, because you know, the all the all the names look the same at some point. You know, sure, Con Fast, sure. never. Uh, the, the first one, the first one that I remember going to was in 2012. Oh, okay. Uh, and I had done earlier that year, I had done my first press thing at a really small show 
in Colorado Springs. Mm. The press guy at that show was also a podcaster and knew the struggle because he had gone through the same struggle. So he was like, dude, I'll, I'll take a chance on you. Ooh. So chance was taken at the first show. And then when it came time to, for Starfest 2012, I found out that the same guy was running press for that show. So I said, why don't I just give it a shot? It's a bigger show, but why not? Sure. And he said, yes. And, <laughs> and I went, I was so excited. I went and I actually went and I had a, a Best Buy gift certificate. I think it was gift, Best Buy. Either way, I had a gift certificate, gift certificate for some place and went out and bought a microphone to like interview people with just so I would feel it was professional. A, it was a really long rock band cut the mic. <laughs> exactly. To, exactly. To, to, to your home Xbox. <laughs> like, the, well, <laughs> the USB extensions were vast. Yes. <laughs> uh, but um, I got to interview two, well, one uh, movie writer and one movie actor that year. And Phil I was, Lamar. I'm sorry? Phil Lamar. No, I, I met him oh. later that year at Denver Comic Con. Mm. Uh, but Jeffrey Reddick, the writer of Final Destination, one through five, I'm pretty sure he wrote the first five. Wow. Um, I think there were only five. I think there's <laughs> seven. Seven? Oh my six, God. Six or seven? I could How be wrong they... on that. Wow. Uh, Death does not know how to get teenagers. No, apparently. no, not at all. Not at all. Oh, man. Um, two funny things about that, though. Uh, my friends knew that I wanted to go interview him, and they were already mm -hmm. an established media outlet, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they ran ahead of me because they knew how nervous I was. True. And they said, dude, just do it. Just He'll say yes. Don't worry about, you know, the rules of interviewing people. Just go and ask him. He'll say yes. So I was working up my 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 energy to do it or what have you, my my confidence to do it, and they ran. Some of my friends ran ahead of me, and said, "Jeffrey, this guy's gonna come up. He's really nervous. He's gonna introduce himself. His name's Josh. Break his balls. Mm. Mm. It'll be fun. Mm. Well, so the, here yeah. I come. I'm all nervous." I ask him for an interview. He says yes. But before he says yes, he looks at the car. I had a business card at the time. I handed him the card. Mm -hmm. He looks at it. He looks at me. He looks at the card again. He's like, your name's Josh. I was like, yes. I'm supposed to be an asshole to you. I'm like, but why? <laughs> and behind me, I hear a, a, a concophony of laughter. As all my newly newly uh, found media friends are all dying, laughing, falling on the ground. I thought, you well, jerks, you jerks. Well, that's, you know, you were, you were hazed into the society. You were I, I was, yeah, into... totally, totally. Yeah. So mm. b being that the nerves were still way high, we start the interview. The guy's mm. name again is Jeffrey Reddick. I introduced him as Jeremy Roenick. The ex hockey player, not even the well, same least, <laughs> sport. But at least it, it, it was a name that you knew, and it wasn't just right. like I'm going to give you a random name that doesn't exist. It's like a name that existed in the world. Right? So. Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> terrible. So I do the introduction, and he's like, "Hey, man, that was great. That was a great introduction. Wasn't my name, but great introduction." And so we 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 did it over and. It was all hot and sweaty, kind of like the thing I did before we started. I got all hot and sweaty, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it was a good it was a good conversation by the end of the thing, but rough beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, the second guy guy I got to interview was um, shit. I'm gonna forget his name now. He was in Sleepaway Camp, uh, Jonathan mm -hmm. Tiersten, and I had never seen that movie. I had never even heard of that movie, but again, I was kind of encouraged. To go interview the guy because he'll inter he'll do the interview, man. Just ask him whatever. And at the end of that interview, he looked at me and he said, "I hope the next time I see you, 
you do a better job because that sucked. And then winked at me. So I knew I knew I was cool with him. It was kind of like a like a Neil Adams kind of backhanded compliment kind of thing. But right. uh, uh, but it was really cool just going to Starfest because I got a lot of cool opportunities. My, my the very first professionally uh, um, audioed and cameraed on camera interview was at Starfest. I got to. You can. That wasn't. S- go ahead. That wasn't the the uh, Lou Ferrigno incident. No, was no, it? that was a different oh. Comic Con. Uh, no, but I got to interview Sam Witwer, Darth Maul. Yeah. Before he was Darth Maul. <laughs> oh, oh, it was before oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, Darth yeah. Maul. After he, oh, he was, was the voice of. Well, he Star was on. The, he was the voice of Star Killer. He was also right. well. He was yeah. there to promote some fucking vampire show that he was on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't watch yeah. the vampire show, but I had played yeah. The Force Unleashed, and I had seen Smallville, where he was. Oh right, because he was. Um, I always um, want to say Abomination, but that's not right. No, the God. It's not the dark, one from. It's not Dark Side. It's not he Dark Side. Dark Side. I don't no, think. No, no, no. Uh, he's. No, no, he's not dark side. He's um, look it up. He's Bone Man. Um, <laughs> bone Man, yes. Um, but whatever the guy's name was, and so he um, was there to promote the Vampire Show, and I was like, mm-hmm. I hadn't seen that. Yeah, fuck that, dude. Uh, let's talk about Star Wars. <laughs> and he was annoyed, but he Doomsday. He was Doomsday. Doomsday. That's it. Uh, so we talked about Smallville and Star Wars. And at, at the very end, he got to plug his new show. And I got oh, he did a right. bumper way back in the day. But Oh, was that it, one of your first? It is one of the first ones I got. The problem is, is that while he was doing the bumper and nailing it on the first on the first take, they were taking my yeah. mic off of me and didn't mute my channel. Uh-huh. So all I don't even want to do it because it'll ruin this recording as well. But imagine rubbing a microphone against a shirt, and that's all you wow. hear, as well as someone attempting. Yes, so while someone you know you can kind of hear somebody saying something, but because that's so peaky, you can't hear anything else. Oh, and you didn't have something that put you guys on separate channels or anything. I'm sure they were on separate channels, but they didn't mute my channel before taking my microphone off. Oh. And it was under <laughs> my, you know, it was under my shirt. So I had to unclip it and pull it through my shirt. So the whole time it's just rubbing on shit. But, uh, it's just, Starfest was always just a place to go and hang out. Content. I said this on mm-hmm. the Facebooks. Content wasn't anything you ever had to like worry about getting. Because mm-hmm. it was so easy to get. You didn't have to try. Uh, the hotel that it was at was very conducive to f- uh, photography, to getting video, to the, their, their, their media rules about interviewing people as far as a, the, their, their quote-unquote A-list celebrities you had to mm-hmm. put in for. But anybody else, you can guerrilla interview for. Uh, guerrilla interview. So I was like, well, shit, I already know how to do that. Okay. So it was it was really cool. And then they always had a, a Saturday night party, much like the parties we would do in Philadelphia. Uh, oh, very good. Just with a hell of a lot more people and less celebrities. Sure. But occasionally over the years, you would see a, you know, a celeb walk through the party and kind of check things out with his, ent- his or her entourage. And it just, mm-hmm. um, it, it was always just a friendly place to go. I don't know, it, it, I don't know how else to, to stress that. It was just really friendly and inviting and easy to, to, to just get along with everybody. Uh, one of the first times I went as Deadpool was at Starfest. And the whole, the whole night, all I did was take pictures with people. The beauty of cosplay. I mean, and it that's is kind yeah. of that's the fun part of cosplay. That is true. That is kind of a you know part of it was a cosplay thing, but 
it was also just like people got it. They understood it. And they were like, that's awesome. Take a picture with me. Mm. You know, or they'd be like, who's under there? Because everybody, there was a guy in the costume contest Saturday night that was wearing basically the same costume he had first showed up to or with in 1996 when he came to the very first, his very first Starfest. He started as a some sort of a Klingon con, uh, costume, and he was still mm-hmm. basically wearing the same costume he started, just that had been approved, improved upon over the years and made mm-hmm. more realistic, if you will. Oh sure, yeah. Uh, but and that's what I. That's the other big thing is that the show, forty five years running, a lot of the people that were there were the same people that had been there the whole run that had brought their kids back in the Mm. seventies and eighties. And then those kids grew up and brought their kids and then they became teenagers or late teenagers or early twenties. And were going to the show just to, to do it because that's what they did. So it was, Mm. it was a family event. It was a social thing. It, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Did they ever explain why they got rid why they're getting rid of it? Did they say, oh, well, we can't do this anymore because... The only thing that I can think of is that everybody's everybody's getting old. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way okay. around it. Um, their MC that had, that had been their MC since the beginning, uh, tragically mm-hmm. or suddenly, one of the two choose your adjective I guess verb I don't know which one that is um he died last year and it really sucked the wind out of the show runners and then from what I understand the show runners also had a death in the family shortly before the show began so I think it's just you know it came time that you know it's just they're tired it, it I I imagine and, Francis, and it sounds like they didn't want to sell it either. They, they, yeah. Mm, mm, more on that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh. But you and I know not even firsthand the you know the stresses that go into running on a show. I don't know. I don't know how how yeah. much you know. I I I would talk to Jason quite a bit leading up to those shows, and he would just be freaking about getting in contact with you know whatever agents about what celebrities wanted to do a show. And (laughs) we would always see the Philadelphia showrunner on Saturday night at the bar, you know, downing bottles of alcohol because he wasn't meeting anybody's reserve and it was have to come, come out of his pocket. You know, so like, yeah, well, I mean, that that was, I I mean, that was a unique situation. That was just a very, yeah. Yeah. I understand, but it's it's not. I don't think running a show is as simple as you know tying your shoe. Sure, hanging out with your friends at the bowling alley. Ideally, you know that would be rad. Um, but so I think it's just the time came. The time has come. Uh, so the time. This okay. uh, so going back to what I was saying about the former hotel. Uh, they didn't put it on in the same hotel that they had been doing it for the last, basically the last 10 years, minus a, a show here, or there, or a year here and there. Um, it was in a hotel that I had been at for other shows, and it's a much, much smaller hotel. And uh, I was going somewhere with this. Every, everything was scaled down. The dealer rooms were mm. very small. There was very little as far as like... Uh, uh, art, you know, like they usually have a very large art room and a model area where you can build models or go to a modeling panel where they teach you how to build models. And they have mm. like a, a, a thing for robot uh, robots and droids and that kind of thing, R2 units. And that, uh, th- that was all okay. just majorly scaled back this year. All of it. Everything was scaled back. You asked me a question. I don't remember what the question was. Oh, whether or not anyone was going to buy it out or purchase it. Oh, yeah. So, 
I go to get my badge. And there's an interview taking place. So I have to wait outside with the security guard guy who is not super friendly, but just friendly enough, right? Well, <laughs> sure. So uh, the door opens, and I'm I'm made aware that I'm standing outside waiting to get my badge. But clearly there's still some kind of a celebrity inside the room and other media people. So I don't want to run in there and just stuff up the room. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting. Sure. And suddenly I hear a voice of somebody and he, this person is talking about candied bacon. And I'm like, there's only one man I know that makes candied bacon. And it's the guy that gave me my first press shot here. Oh. Okay. So I stick my head in the door, and lo and behold, there's my buddy Dave. So we have mm -hmm. a little quick, quick chit-chat outside of the room. So I still don't have my badge mm -hmm. at this point. <laughs> it's been like 45 minutes since I've entered the door. Still no badge. Wow. And I'm sure. inside the convention, deep inside the convention. Um, right. So we're talking outside the press room. And I said, you know, I, 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 I didn't even feel obligated to, to be here. I just felt like I should be here because you're the first guy to give me a shot. It's funny. I run into you at the last one as well. It's poetic. It's full circle. Okay. And when I said okay. last one, he looked at me with his big eyebrows lifted up in the air and mouthed, maybe. Mm -hmm. Now... That's not total insider. I'm not fucking getting anybody in trouble because I've received an email on Sunday evening. I believe it was a public email that went out, kind of wrapping up the last, the last, uh, the last convention from the showrunner's perspective. And it did say at the very bottom, there was a lot of talk about still continuing to meet up in some way, shape, or form. We're going to work on something. It's probably not going to be a convention, but we'll try and still have some sort of Starfest meetup of some kind. So I'm hopeful at least okay. that they will do, they'll be able to arrange something or at the very least be able to tack on to some other show. So in other words, yeah. So they, they can potentially be, you know, um, Denver Comic Con presents Starfest, and Starfest is like this little thingy off to the side somewhere. Because right. it used to be, um, San Diego used to have um, a smaller convention done by Zachary Levi that did, I forgot what was it called? It was at the Children's Museum. We both went. We went, we went one year. We went to that museum. They uh, had like video games, and they had like a big screen, and they had like all sorts of stuff. Okay. They had VR the, 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 the day we went. Anyway, okay, okay. So okay. Zach had his, yeah. So, so you know, th this celebrity had his own mini convention that was free to go to. Oh, um, okay. I remember this now. I remember now. I'm on board. Yeah, it was free. Yeah, it was free to go to. It was a, it, 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 it was right outside the museum, or inside the museum, and it, it like really small and really kind of cheesy stuff in there. But it was like something to do if you couldn't get into the convention proper mm -hmm. at San Diego. And so maybe they'll do something like that where it's like, yeah, it's a mini convention within a convention where they'll have their own, I was going to say games, but not necessarily games, but they, like they right. have just, yeah, their own exhibits and their own stuff. Right. Which would be cool. I mean, yeah. that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. The the original uh, team that put on Denver Comic Con uh, broke off and did their mm -hmm. own thing and they called it... Uh, Shit, they only ran like two or three shows. Um, Dink, D I N K, and it's it. It was an acronym for something. Um, Denver, Denver International. Denver Independent. Something. Network Convention. With a K. Because. With a K. <laughs> with Mortal Kombat. You know, it's the Mortal Kombat up. Convention, yeah. really. <laughs> exactly. We're on the same fucking wavelength. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So they broke, and it was more of a Comic Con artist focused show where yeah. Denver Comic Con broke off into the more pop culture thing with 
a side comic, comic, yeah. with a side of comics, much like oh. every convention out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, just over the years, like I said, uh, just a great show to go to. Fun as hell. Uh, the the hotel that it was at, the hotel did a renovation a few years back. Okay. The renovation completely screwed the flow of that show at that location. Um, ooh, all right. Where, excuse me, where before the renovation, they had an atrium, it's an indoor, uh, indoor, lo- uh, indoor, uh, what do you call them, balconies that look mm-hmm. down into the atrium. So the thing was to decorate your balcony. Or have balcony parties. That was part oh, of the fun. thing. Okay. When they did the renovation, mm-hmm. they get rid of all the balconies. They put a, a restaurant in the middle of the atrium. So, like, there was no oh. flow. And it basically is a hotel saying, please don't do any more shows here. Uh, I just oh. recently went to an anime show there at the same hotel, and it just doesn't work there anymore. Wow. It just, it, ah, that sucks. It does. It does. Um, but uh, just o- overall, just a, a fun local show to go to that for the most, for me anyway, was always free of drama and uh, or any, any, any kind of hostile type of things. It wasn't the same for everybody every time. Um, right. I, I witnessed, I witnessed a, a cosplay girl basically get accosted by some guy and oh i think i remember that story that that same girl that same girl today is a professional wrestler so you know it would be really cool to (laughs) in a sense it'd be cool to see her come back you know to denver come to a star fest and and that same that same guy tries to do the same bullshit he tried back then yeah it'd be a whole different Whole different outcome, I'm sure. Whole different story, you know. But uh, yeah, it, it, the the last year it was it, halfway through the day. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go put my camera away because this isn't about necessarily like you know you know how it is, Francis. Especially when you and I go to a show together. It's always me, yes, shooting shooting pictures, either with my phone or with my camera. I'm never in any of those pictures. No, we, we actually very talked about rarely, this when you were at WonderCon. Yeah. Very rarely am I in a lot of the pictures. And I decided right. and how that I'm not I need to I need to be in some of these pictures. Yes, yes you do. You know, it's yes. it's it's more about remembering this than it is documenting this. We've documented it for ten years. So <laughs> That's a little bit of both, a little it, bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah. Sure, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, this this is, I'm not saying it's about me, but it's like, I need to be here. These, these are the people that started what I called my con family, what I call my con family. It all started here. So I need to, I, when I run into these people, right. I'm putting I'm putting the camera away and I'm breaking my phone out and taking selfies with everybody. Yes, I was going to say, you took selfies at least. I took selfies with everybody. Um, The very first podcast, that first or second podcast that was very open, open arms to me, invited me over to their house to have dinner and and record a show after first meeting them. Uh, What is the podcast name? Shout out to uh, uh, Open Your Toys. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the host, Slick McFavorite. I'm going to keep kayfabe on this. Um, so the McFavorites, I ran into them. The last time I saw them, they had Toddler McFavorite. Toddler McFavorite has grown up into mm. a little person McFavorite. Hmm. So I, I get a hug from Mr. and Mrs. McFavorite. And I go to give a high five to little person McFavorite. And she comes and she starts to give me a hug. And I'm like, I mean, I was going to give you just a high five, but if you're comfortable with that, okay. 
So it was cool. It was just kind of, you know, I haven't, cause I haven't seen these people in like four years, three or four years. So it's just, okay. it was just really cool. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, just a great time to just hang out, reminisce, go to the, go to the costume contest and just, Oh, you just watch. You went to the costume contest. Oh yeah. Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> The best costume I saw was uh, the 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 lady, the alien lady from Mars Attacks that had the uh, blonde yeah. bob and the really tight, like, red and white dress. And that she couldn't really walk. She had to take little, like, little tiny steps. Do you remember this? Doesn't uh, matter. Uh, vaguely, yeah. Doesn't matter. Made me made me laugh because people in the uh, audience started making the Mars Attacks noise. Oh sure, yeah. you've seen the movie, I hope. Uh, a long time ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that's why it was also funny because people were making the noise about a movie that hasn't been out in twenty twenty five years or something. At like least that. twenty, yeah, twenty plus years. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a nineties film. Totally, yeah. totally. Uh, but uh, I did. I only went on Saturday. Made the most of it. Stayed till the 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 party was going, mm. uh, but I lost all of the people I knew. Okay, like I saw somebody that I I took on a couple dates actually at one point, and it just didn't really work out. We've stayed kind of friendly with each other when we run into each other, and I see her and I go to say hi and said hi and I turn around and everybody I knew was gone. So I, they made, I, they, made the, they, they made their escape. They saw they saw their opening. Yeah, they're like, get the fuck away from Josh. Um, <laughs> but I, I I I walked around. I took a couple more pictures with people and couldn't find anybody I knew. So I just like I guess I'm gonna go, everybody. And nobody heard me, and I left because there's like Aww. you know well, there's like a thousand people there. Nobody's expecting to hear me, but I'm just saying like all right, uh, I'm gonna go. Uh. But it was great. It was a great time. It was great. I did not want to be there on Sunday. Um, <laughs> the, the, the Sunday at Starfest was always kind of slow to begin with. But Sunday, at the very last one, in an unfamiliar hotel, about a third of the size it had been running. No, <laughs> no. It, it's I'm slight. I'm, yeah, it's slightly disappointing that it didn't. It didn't. It didn't have like a big blowout. Instead, they 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 downsized for their final one. Instead yeah. of having like a bigger, more involved event, they're like, right. "No, we're gonna shrink it down." Which well, is unfortunate. And I think I think it would have been fine where they were at, except for they put the the model robot comic artist, you know, portion of the show on the twelfth mm. floor of this hotel. Where oh, everything geez. else, so nobody went. Everything else in the hotel was in the lobby, and it, the, this lobby is like a ranch style house. It has like a, a sub first floor. It's not quite the basement. It's not quite the first floor. You only step down like three steps to, to get into it, but it opens up oh, into, sure. a wi- yeah. into a wide area with like conference rooms and whatnot. But okay. there wasn't enough room to put this other group of things in the same area. So they put it on the twelfth floor. That was the only thing in between the first floor and the twelfth floor was that were just hotel rooms. So there's nothing in between. And of the five elevators that were there, six elevators, one was a solid glass elevator. You don't use that on convention weekends at any point. Any any hotel anywhere. That's just dangerous. A, oh, I see what you're A talking. glass elevator? Yeah, yeah. That's just fucking dangerous. Yeah. Come on. So yeah. that, that one was yeah, shut well. down. But of the five mm-hmm. that were standard elevators, only two were working. So you had to walk everywhere. You had to climb. No. You had people, to work for it. People oh. waited. People waited for 15, 20 minutes to oh. take the elevator. <laughs> now, as I stated earlier, I had been to this hotel quite a few times for other shows. I knew where the service elevator was. So it wasn't line con or anything. It was. No, the elevator, the elevator was line con. 
except for if you knew where the service elevator was, which I did. You're not supposed to use the service elevator. That's for the staff. Yeah. But man, no one's going to stop me. And then okay. about halfway through the day, somebody must have seen me go in that door. Because the next time now I went to go, line for that other <laughs> next time I went to use a service elevator, there was about fifteen motherfuckers in the standing in the oh. hallway. I was like, "Damn it! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Who let the secret out?" But well, that's a terrible place. You know, the twelfth floor is a terrible place to put anything. It so, is. It is. Um, yeah. But uh, like I said, just a very small, very small convention. I imagine it was very similar to that. That. Comic, uh, San Diego Comic Fest that you went to last month or earlier this month, whenever yes, that was. Yeah. Um, There's a hotel. Yeah. I do wish I had stuck around or come back for for Sunday because they did a big group picture. I got the hiccups. Oh. They did a big group picture with all of the staff and a bunch of the people that were there at the end. Right. So it would have been really cool to be a part of that, but. Uh, like I said, I, I just I just couldn't do, I couldn't do Sunday. It, just, it would have been too depressing to just be the the last show to see people breaking down for the last time. Francis is falling asleep. Cause I'm boring him to death. No, it's not that at all. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's just a great time. Just a great time. And uh, you know what? I really wanted to cap it off with at the end of the night, Francis. Besides. You know, some weed. There was, there was something else. There was an item. I had a taste for something, and it wasn't yet available. It Get becomes available out. this Thursday as of recording. Hopefully, it'll still be available by the time oh, this comes out for Mexican. your audio for your audio pleasure. But the Mexican pizza coming back to Taco Bell. Pizza, yeah. You thought I was setting up for some sort of commercial. Well, I was expecting um, it was either going to be In and Out or um, White Castle, but I forget. Yes, of course. The uh, yes. thought about uh, you know what's funny. I, I thought about tweeting. I've been watching White Castle the other day, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't think of anything clever to say to them, so I I deleted the the draft. Go ahead. So I'm going to look for it. Apparently, people have because I ha- people have early access to it. Apparently, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've seen a few people and already have it. I have the Taco Bell app. I never use it because I don't really go that often. But I wonder if that means I could I can access it. You, you like very tomorrow. well may. You very well may may be able to. All right, I'm gonna have to try it then, because I have. Let's see, here it is. Redeem now. Your Mexican pizza early access is here. Hmm. Only on the app from 517 to 58. So, yeah, today and tomorrow. So I can get it tomorrow. Maybe I'll get one tomorrow. Oh, boy. On the Taco Bell app. Wow. That's a commercial for the Taco Bell app. Um, Tell me, man. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Don't give in to temptation. mm, Sometimes that's fun, though. It is. Yeah. He very much is. You know what else is fun, Francis? What's that? Going to see movies from your youth that you didn't get to see in your youth in theaters today. Uh, what's today, G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe is going to be uh, in theaters next month for like one oh, or two month. for one or two days. Go see it. Be a good time. What's today? What is today? What? What is the day? He said it was out today, right? No, I movie. said it's it's out. No, what, for... what is, what's the movie today? I don't know. Oh, I can. I didn't understand what you said then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're asking me questions so, I don't have fucking answers for, man. I don't know. Um, so you're you're gonna you're gonna watch a movie? I'm gonna go see GI Joe from your child. I'm gonna go see GI Joe, the animated movie from eighty. 80- Seven, I think it's eighty-seven, uh, in theaters, uh, for like a mm-hmm. one. It's like a one-time, one-time thing. I don't know how many days. Did it's they have be a available, song? But what? 
did, did, did they have a song like you got the touch or uh, uh no i there 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 was some some tunes and in the, in the no there wasn't the, the, no gi joe didn't have any tunes they got celebrities they got speaking of don johnson he was in the gi joe animated film burgess meredith last film was the gi joe film Do you know what movie? You know. Do you know what this movie was called in the UK? Action Man, the movie. You were close. Action Force, the movie. Action Force. I was close. Yeah, I couldn't remember what they yeah, called it in the close. UK. Yeah, because they're like, "What's a GI Joe?" Oh, this is with Serpentor. Oh, wow. Yeah, Serpentor Glo- Globulus. I think that was Burgess Meredith's uh, character's <laughs> name. Yeah, it was uh, it, probably they went all sci fi with the movie. It was very odd uh, at the very end of the movie. All right. So half a step back in the Transformers animated movie that came out six to nine months before that movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Optimus Prime dies and people freak the fuck yes. out. Parents were freaking yeah. out, you know, right into the studio. What the fuck? Well, from all the backlash. Mm-hmm that movie got from parents and kids freaking out and crying and shit. Duke, the leader of the GI Joes was actually supposed to die at the end of the movie. And you don't see it on screen, but somebody off screen radios in and says, Duke's going to be okay. It's going to be just fine. He didn't die. Don't worry, kids. If you, According to this, it says um, in the film's ending, it stated that he, uh, he had come out of the coma. That's it. Uh, for Duke's death, writer and story editor Buzz Dixon said in an interview with head, JoeHeadquarters.com, if you watch the visuals and don't listen to the soundtrack, it's obvious Duke dies. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think Lady J uh, is, like, crying over his dead body. He, he oh. Serpentor throws one of his snake spears right into his heart. Oh, no, he survived. He just went into a coma for that one. Yeah. He's fine. He's fine, kids. He's fine. It's you fine. know, no one dies in in GI Joe anyway. No one does. So no, I'm a little dies. amazed. It, yeah. Which was always a shock yeah. when you when you flipped the channel and you watched uh, Robotech, where everybody dies in Robotech. Well, the Japanese don't care. Oh, that's fucked up. Um, no, in the sense <laughs> of um, uh, <laughs> of uh, 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 of whether, or not, yeah, uh, yeah, that too, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was funny. That so good. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna watch that. I, I'm, I'm gonna watch that. Uh, so, so before, who, out of curiosity, mm-hmm. because I've been, I've been, um, biting my lip on this. Who's who's follower number twenty six? Oh shit. There was two things I was supposed to mention at the beginning of this show. So everybody, first of all, mm. uh, you need to welcome Yomelia420. Because oh, the, oh very apropos. apropos ap- yeah. Yes, very apropos for, for, for me anyway. Uh, they are our newest uh, follower. So shout out to you, whoever you are. Thanks a lot. Uh, I wish I had a fanfare Yo. animation. Maybe I can work on that. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, just yeah. put 2,000 and, be, and people can be confused. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> we're working on, uh, I, I took the sound out. Uh, but yeah, we are working oh. towards the road to 2,000. Uh, we'll have to get to 50 first. But you know, road to 2,000, working on it. Like and, like and subscribe. I got a button for that too. Like and subscribe. Or I guess subscribe and, and hit the bell icon. So you could smash well, it, you can hit it, you can caress it. You, you post this on YouTube, so they can subscribe and hit the bell too. Yeah, right there. yeah, yeah. We're, I like that, that that both services use a bell. So that's true. So we need we need to come up uh, whenever I hit the the go button on the Patreon. We're gonna need to come up with a name for our people, for our audience, so we can refer to them. Well, as, you know, like there there's some shows out there that have like. Uh, the the peanut gallery or there's a thing that has the pledge hammers you know for for their 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 patreon pledgers 
Yeah, they have uh, the Tadpool at one pl- on one uh, podcast, and yeah. one that I listened to, they call them they call their people the Weekly Wackadoos. So, uh, but that that seems too complicated. That, that, I can't even spell that. But uh, Weekly Wackadoos. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to come up with something. But um, until then, it gives me gives me time to think about it. Uh, one little tiny thing before we get out of here that happened last night. Um, on the on the Monday night wrestling show. Two, oh. two top performers, the women's tag team champions of the Monday Night Raw TV show for WWE, four realsies, walked into Talent Services' office, put their tag championship belts on the table, and said, we're done. Goodbye. Oh, wow. Yes. It, wow. People thought this it was... This was not scripted or anything. No. They, there was a lot of people out there that thought it was a work. But no, it is a full-on shoot. WWE went to the length of actually putting out a statement uh, concerning what had happened. I don't have it in front of me, but basically says uh, that the two were extremely... Uh, uh, they used a word, but unprofessional was but, one of the words. Oh. And that... Uh, Monday Night Raw is a live scripted TV show that expects its con- contracted employees or contracted characters, I think is the word they used, to perform uh, to perform their, their duties under the contract in which they signed. Sorry, we weren't able to uh, provide the, the main event as we had advertised it, something to that effect. Sasha Banks and Naomi, right? Yes. Uh, Sasha Banks. Uh, all right. For for a little, you know, pop culture references here. Sasha Banks, uh, whoever Sasha Banks' real name is, I can't remember what it is. Uh, she was on The Mandalorian this past season as one of the. Uh, she was one of the female Mandos oh, yeah, with yeah, yeah, Katie yeah. Sackhoff. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she is also the second, third, fourth cousin of Snoop Dogg. Uh, so here it is. Uh, it says um, uh, they walked into the WE office, head of talent relations, John Laranitis office, Laranitis office, with their suitcase in hand, placed the tag team championship belts and walked out. They claimed they weren't respected enough to, as tag team champions. And even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. But in it, Raw is a scripted TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we are unable to deliver as advertised tonight's main event. Wow. Yeah, pretty crazy. Wow. So there's not a lot to report on, really. As of yet, there hasn't been a, the, the, the two to uh wrestlers in in um question have not come out and said anything so there's nothing really to speculate on no sense in speculating i should say but just pretty crazy um a lot of people ask for their releases from their contracts from wwe publicly uh they use twitter mostly as their vehicle to ask for their publicly ask for their release instead of doing it privately um well it's it's been a long time since a wrestler has just upped and said screw it I'm leaving. I don't have a, an example for the last one that did it, but I know it's happened in in the in in the modern era, which is what we're in. It has definitely happened at least five times. I think that's called the modern era. Yeah, as opposed to. Uh, you know the golden era or or the attitude era right. as they called it yeah the ruthless aggression <laughs> era i'm not wow. joking i'm not fucking joking <laughs> doesn't have the I mean, same doesn't have the same sound appeal as the golden era but you know mm-hmm. whatever uh mm-hmm. but yeah the, the, the crazy kind of i just went to wipe my eye francis and just smudged the shit out of my glasses because i somehow after wearing these for two years forgot i wear glasses now i can't see out of my fucking left eye <laughs> <laughs> um why i don't it's why i don't wear my glasses on well 
I'd rather be blind than than poke my eye, poke in my ass all the time. We're not used to it yet. Uh, well, I mean, I should probably go get Our my name eyes is... checked again. And shouldn't you? So do it their real names are. Go ahead. You are, yeah. You're supposed to do it every couple of years to upgrade, update your your prescription, uh, and it's in your uh, your uh, eye vision uh, insurance. Yeah. You do that every year. Uh, the names of the characters for Sasha Banks and Naomi are Mercedes Vernado and Trinity Fatu. Fatu, yes. And those are the real names. Yes, yes. Yeah, Fatu. Tr- Trinity Fatu. The Fatu family is is a dynasty family in wrestling. Uh, it's the same family as Roman Reigns, uh, as The Rock. Yeah. Fatu, Fatu, I, I, yeah, that's who I meant to say was The Rock because that would you would know who The Rock is. You don't know who Roman Reigns is. I do know. Well, I know enough about Roman Reigns in the sense of I know that there is, he's been probably or maybe not anymore, but at least as of like a couple of years ago, he's like one of the most controversial. He was one of the most controversial uh, for winning one of the competitions and they felt it was illegitimate illegitimate that he won one of the big events i don't remember which one it, maybe, he, it was w, he, maybe it was what wrestlemania but yeah yeah he, he basically just got pushed to the top and people were like why yeah uh but yeah. um yeah because he's related to the rock yeah yeah well i mean you yeah. you may rem- you might remember the name yokozuna oh yeah yokozuna sure yeah, yeah. he wasn't japanese he was samoan <laughs> he was part of the Rock's family. <laughs> oh wow! Really? I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. Man. Look him up. Just... Uh, he was either a, a Fatu or he was an Anoi, an Anoi, an Anoi, a apostrophe something. There, there's two. There's like two or three. I know. Yeah. Anoi. He's, he's Agatupu Rodney Anoi. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Fatus and the Anois are the two big uh, dynasty families. I can't. There's um, the original two. I can't remember their names. Possibly Sika, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, they were blood brothers. Like the whole, you know, slice your hand, shake your hands, blood brothers, and they yeah. they're like the head of the family. And then each of their families started to marry into each other, and it's a huge thing. It's a, it's a, it's very mafioso. It is. It is very much so, even though the mafia doesn't exist. Right. It's a it's a Hollywood <laughs> made up thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's how we get. That's how we get people to watch our shit. Um. Anyway, I don't have anything else to talk about. You got anything, Francis? Anything going on in your world? As we're dropping, oh. as we're s- dropping, fucking uh, the ability to do this at, at a as our vast... frames fall from the sky. Yes, yes, I am. I'm. 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 We're we're at fifty eight kilobits a second right now. So we should probably fucking end this. Ooh, hey, I remember those speeds. Oh, now we're up to 5,900. All right. right, We're all over the place. Let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, Where can people find you on the internet? We've hit our time. What? Look, uh, we've hit our time. Oh, yeah. At at the very least. Uh, Yeah, look, go look up at AKA the other guy on Twitter. Actually, go to um, uh, sincerestarcasm.net and check out the new show, Is This Love? With myself and Sarah Nade as yes. hosts of a of a, re- a show about love and relationships. I, I listened it's to the fun. first one. So it far, is, people are liking it. I listened to the first one. It is fun. I have not listened to the second one yet. It is in my list to get through in the next day or two. But I enjoyed it. I had fun. I, I love that you kept kayfabe when talking about me. <laughs> I appreciate you brought that. up as a couple of examples. <laughs> you, 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 yes, and I appreciate the fact that I was a different person in each example. That wasn't the same person. Of course. I yeah. appreciate that. Like, uh, doesn't that, that break blow. KFA by saying that out loud, though? Yeah, now it <laughs> doesn't does. That break but, KFA. But here, here's okay. the thing, Francis. This is called marketing because I'm talking yeah. about your show and talking about something that happened on that show. And if people are interested, they can go check out that show, Is This Love Podcast. 
uh, it's it, it. You remember it from the White Snake, the White Snake lyrics. That's how you remember it. Apparently, that seems to be everyone's favorite. It's like, yeah, people love that song. But uh, yes, then go over there, check that out. Uh, also on Wednesdays, you can check out Francis on Super Geeked Up. It is a live geeky uh, improv show, much like Whose Line Is It Anyway, just very geek themed. Uh, it's a good show. It's fun. I wish I could do it, uh, but I get up too early in the morning. Uh, you can find me on the internets at uh, 303 underscore ninja on the Twitters, 303 ninja on the Instagram. You can also find the Points of Interest podcast Instagram at POI podcast. You couldn't find it yesterday as of recording, but you couldn't today. I thought I was going to have to start the whole thing over. Let me give you a little, little, little free advice. When Instagram asks you anything about verification of your age, make sure you give them the correct age and not try and be all fucking cute and give them the age of in which the podcast was born. <laughs> because Instagram thinks that you're only 12 years old then and says, you can't use Instagram. I'm deleting your account. Yeah, you have to be minimum age of 13, I think, yeah. to use Instagram. So, just like um, Facebook. Yeah. So I had to uh, go through a lo li long, lengthy process of reinstating that we won't even get into, but go check it out at Instagram at POI Podcast. Otherwise, call, text, voicemail 314 764 7631. You can call into the show. You can talk to us. It'll be fun. I wish for the day I'd to look down to see. My I got fucking hiccups and burps. Indigestion, bro. I, I, I can't wait for the day that I look down and my phone is ringing from my Google number and it's it's one of you out there that says I have something to say to these guys like please stop doing this how or how much you love the, the Mexican pizza yes yes I'm going to get one tomorrow fuck it uh, we're out of here uh, enjoy everybody see you next time bye <laughs>